golfers, whether you are a female golfer or anyone with a family member, such as a daughter or a niece or a mother who plays golf, this information should matter to you. Women are being marginalized in golf and no one even realizes it. Many women golfers will merely quit the sport because they do not realize that it is not them but rather the circumstances in which they play that make them less than they could be. What circumstances? Firstly, the yardage and layout of golf holes. Women cannot hit the ball as far as required, have far less ball trajectory than adequate and their smaller hands and wrists often cannot hack out of thick rough. Two other marginalizing factors are the type of clubs they use and the golf swing they are taught. Believe it or not, females do wish to play golf. The National Golf Foundation's research shows that 450,000 more females aged 6 and up played golf in 2020 than in the previous year. Additionally, 34% of all junior golfers and 36% of all beginners are women. However, we have no idea how many of these female golfers the sport will retain long term and I wonder how rosy this picture will be after the dust from the COVID-19 pandemic settles and many female golfers are left wondering whether it is worth their while to continue with a sport which is supposed to be a leisure time activity but brings greater frustration even than a difficult work environment. Marginalization begins with the tee to green distance on each hole which can be extremely and unnecessarily daunting for many. T location compared to the best approach angle for the tee shot also matters. On older golf courses, red tees have usually been pushed in somewhere where people using them will not get hit while waiting for those from tees behind to hit, regardless of how awkward a tee shot it makes for. On newer golf courses, all markers are placed on one long rectangle in order to save on maintenance costs. And of course, no one makes a 100-yard long tee box to allow for suitably forward, forward tees. Besides the tree to green yardage being difficult to manage, many holes become penal in their design rather than strategic when there is a forced carry over water, over all types of dirt and mulch and over thorny bushes. Rough height too, as mentioned earlier, creates problems. In my opinion, based on 45 years of being marginalized and not realizing it, the yardage of a hole should be established based on the reaching the green for regulation ability. Moreover, for the average and not the scratch golfer. The average golfer should be able to reach every single green for regulation in theory that is, if every shot were to be perfect. There'd still be plenty of challenge left without making most golf holes impossible to reach for regulation and thus have hope for a par. Present-day tees designated for women are very difficult for many female golfers. The suggested yardage for females in the USGA's Appendix F on establishing par is up to 220 420 and 600 yards for par 3, 4 and 5 respectively. Compare that to how far women actually hit the golf ball. The USGA in its 2017 distance report showed that the average total driving distance for females with a handicap of 6 or less was a mere 195 yards. The average drive for a 21 to 28 handicap golfer was just 136 yards. Recent data collected by Arcos Golf and published by Golf Monthly is very similar. It states that a 30-year-old zero handicap female golfer will drive the ball 210 yards, while a 20 handicap golfer of the same age would reach only 145 yards. And these distances reduce with each decade gain in age. One of the important contributing factors to club speed and thus to ball speed and distance is strength. Many studies have compared male and female grip strength 
and one review of several such studies states that right-handed males between the age of 20 and 24 would have an average left and right hand grip strength of 47.4 kilos and 53.5 kilos respectively. Females in the same age group would have 27.9 kilos and 30.6 kilos respectively. The right hand grip strength for females is thus only about 57% of their male counterparts. Why does that matter for golf? One golf review article that collated results from several golf research studies found a strong correlation between grip strength and club head or ball speed. And grip strength is but one variable that has been correlated with club speed. Another variable that affects golf club speed is chest strength, which is known to be also less for female golfers as they have less lean body mass in their upper bodies. Other factors determining club speed include height, hand size, age of first starting golf and many other factors. If a female has 57% of the grip strength of a male and less strength and anthropometric factors in other body areas crucial for club speed, why are yardages from the red tees typically used by women 70% or more of that from the white tees typically used by men. As mentioned earlier, it is not just whole length that matters. The 2017 USGA distance report also mentioned that across all handicap categories, females hit their driver more than 95% of the time. Of course they do. The golf industry pours millions of dollars into driver research as distance is something all golfers obsess about. So with a super light, pale pink, 15 degree lofted driver that is sold to women, they are able to get some distance. What happens after the drive? After all, getting a decent score on a hole requires so much more. All the other clubs in a typical female golf set do not have any hope of giving female golfers adequate trajectory to reach a green, especially on newer golf courses where fairways are soft and a high shot becomes essential. The USGA defines a female bogey golfer as one with a course handicap of 24 who hits the tee shot 150 yards and lands on the green of a 280 yard hole in two strokes. But that would require a 130 yard second shot to be made to reach the green. How many women have that kind of carry with whatever else besides the driver is in their bags? And it is not right to say women should go to the expense of getting fitted as that is an expense they may not wish to undertake. And in any case, why are sets being sold to them that are advertised as being female friendly and female specific in that case? Finally, the golf swing itself, described by biomechanists as being one of the most complex movements in sport, is exponentially more difficult for the female golfer. Male golfers can gouge out divots and thus bludgeon the ball into submission. If a golfer is able to gouge out a large divot, the low point is sure to be somewhere in that region, helping get the ball airborne even on miss hits. Females are usually unable to make any divot and thus merely smother the ball, getting reduced ball trajectory and distance as a result. It is not as essential to make a divot as it is for the club to brush the grass firmly and in a precise location as it passes the ball. The probability of that reduces when a golfer moves laterally or vertically during the backswing because the likelihood of precision of low point, which is all that most female golfers can expect, reduces. Recommending a steeper angle of approach or suggesting hitting down on the ball are not good solutions as the precision of club low point is then once again at stake. Currently, only 24% of all golfers are females, according to the NGF. In order to attract and retain more women golfers, considerable research is required to guide the governing bodies of golf, the golf course architects, the golf club manufacturers, and the golf swing instructors on best practices. I would like to start a not-for-profit association that researches and advises stakeholders on how to make the game of golf more woman-friendly 
in meaningful rather than superficial ways to include golf course layouts, club design and golf swing modifications that really work for women. Anyone interested in joining me?